We have discussed a few different kinds of weapons in this Monster Hunter Rise subseries, each with unique characteristics and purposes. Weapons that make truly massive numbers. Others that are more tuned for survivability and general utility. For engaging monsters up close or at a distance. However, there is one very important thing that hasn't been brought to discussion. What is fun? Not rhetorically speaking in the vein of philosophy, no, no, no. Which one of these damn things is just pure fun to use? No need to fret because I have the answers you seek. What we have here is the hammer. If you are the kind of person that looks upon life dead in the eyes and says, I am here for a good time, not a long time, then go ahead and like and subscribe. <laughs> Howdy, y'all. Welcome to the Agony of Gaming. My name is Kanan96, and the word of the day is bonk. Because <laughs> there's going to be a lot of bonking in this video. On this day, I will be your guide and lead you down the path of transcendence to the ultimate means of blunt, false trauma. But first, a word from our sponsor, Rage. I'm just kidding. In all seriousness, there is a small yet very important thing that must be discussed when the hammer is brought to conversation. That being etiquette. The general consensus with this weapon is that you become very intimate with the monster's face. The head of the monster will become your domain, your primary area of operation. Let me explain why. As the name would imply, the hammer is a very blunt weapon. Although it still requires sharpening for some reason. Uh, yeah, I don't think about that too much. Anyways, being a blunt weapon means the hammer is excellent at building KO damage and knocking the lights out of any monster you come across and causing stuns quite often, leaving the target open to more damage from the entire team. The best way to achieve this is by whacking the monster upside the head as much as possible. Not only is this where KO damage is most effective, but generally speaking it is the weakest part of the monster. There are a few obvious exceptions. Laughs in Baroff. Now, the head being the weakest part of most monsters is no big secret. Other hunters may seek to attack the head region at every opportunity in the pursuit of more damage. As a hammer user, it's your responsibility to deter these invaders from entering your territory and neglecting their other responsibilities. You see, a large majority of the weapons deal slicing damage, which is the primo type for cutting off monster tails. However, these bladed weapon users will often prefer to crowd around the head because the numbers are slightly larger and it's easier for the most part. There are two primary issues with this. The first is that the monster's tail is often a vital source of materials that may otherwise go missed if the tail is not severed. Second, and the most important reason, is the monster head real estate is small, and being surrounded by other hunters swinging big goofy longswords is annoying. Now, I wouldn't name drop any culprits that may have been playing with me on stream, but it's possible their names magically pop up on screen. Who knows, it's a crazy world. Alright, now that the Know Your Role public service announcement is over, it's time to talk about the bunks. <laughs> oh damn it, that kind of hurt. First, I think it's important to mention the charging capabilities. Yes, that's right, by presumably gripping the hammer really hard, your hunter is able to achieve three different levels of charge, just like the greatsword. However, you can actually move around while doing it, so there's arguably more utility. Charge level 1 is just an above average bonk. Level 2, though, is a powerful uppercut that is great for KOing monsters, but even better for relocating your teammates, especially when they're crowding your workspace. Nice 
And finally, charge level three has some of the highest damage outputting opportunities and generally speaking should be what you strive for when hunting. Charging the hammer is not exclusive to ground combat either. There is a special aerial mechanic as well. When you initiate a charge while airborne, your hunter will get a little boost that grants them a few extra moments in the air in order to potentially achieve higher levels of charge right before impacting upon the monster. <laughs> but it took like one hit? Oh. Yeah. Oh, dude, died, dude. I did a jumping charge, a hammer smash, and took him out in a single hit. The, the, the science behind this is a bit of a mystery. And I am certainly no rocket surgeon, but what I believe is happening is the hunter is able to clinch their butt cheeks with incredible force, thereby releasing a puff of air with so much thrust that they essentially perform a double jump. Scientifically, it's phenomenal, but practically, it's kind of weird, not gonna lie. But that's just a theory. A game theory. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm just, I'm kidding. I'm sorry. Now, aside from breaking the laws of physics in more ways than one, the hammer is pretty simple. It's just different flavors of using the thing to hit the thing. But being simple doesn't mean you don't have options. For instance, you have the choice between hitting them with the power of yellow or the power of blue. Each color having different moves accordingly. I mostly end up using the yellow because it allows you to use a move I affectionately call the Beyblade. Which by no means is the most effective thing you could be doing unless you're trying to build up ailments. But it is freaking fun. Speaking of building status ailments, if you didn't know already, the best way to pop one off is by hitting the monster rapidly in a short amount of time. And there are few better ways to do that than with the flip a dip. What used to be exclusively a sliding move, man, I miss those, is now a dedicated silk bind skill, meaning you can do it whenever you want. And if you're like me, it means you're gonna be using it all the damn time because it's flashy. But more importantly, it is fun. Oh, you can also initiate it from sliding down a slope. The hammer is the only weapon that kept its sliding attack from the previous generation, because the hammer is simply the best. Alright, we've talked about how fun and amazing the hammer is, now let's talk about doing some damage. These next two moves I'm about to mention aren't going to have any funky made up names because the default names are kind of awesome. The first one is called the Big Bang Combo, and it's super simple. Whenever the monster is in a vulnerable state, all you have to do is mash the A button. The same way you mashed the like button on this video. And your hunter will start the combo, bonking the monster three times in a row and concluding with one mega bonk in what may be the highest damage output the hammer is capable of. It can be tricky though because you're pretty exposed while executing the combo. And if the monster moves out of the way during the three starting hits, then the whole thing comes to a screeching halt, so timing is everything. The next move has comparable damage, is easier to do, and has an even cooler name, the Impact Crater. Yeah! This is your Silkbind skill assigned to the A button. Wow, that button is very busy with this weapon, huh? Your hunter launches themselves in the air and comes down hammer first to dish out a buttload of damage. This move does so much damage and so quickly that I often find myself using it more so than the Big Bang combo whenever possible. I may have an impact crater addiction, honestly. Whenever I see two silk bugs ready to go, my first instinct is just to impact crater. I really can't help myself. On top of doing mounting damage, being super flashy, and the potential for dodging monster attacks by timing it correctly, there's really no reason to do anything else. I see all day impact crater till the sun goes down. Can I get an amen? It is a good thing I had to switch to a different weapon this week because uh, I may have a problem. If you've made it this far in the video and still haven't rushed off to go craft a hammer build, what more is there to say? There are no more words. 
Your course of action should be obvious. Sell all your long swords, craft the paralysis hammer, and actually start enjoying the game for once. After a few hunts, you can come back here and tell me in the comment section how much fun you had. Or better yet, come tell me on stream, Sundays, Mondays, and Wednesdays, 9pm to midnight CST. I hope to see you there. But if not, then I would like to sincerely thank you for watching this video, and until the next one, this is not goodbye for good, just goodbye for now. But I asked some guys I was playing with Monday night if they re how long it took them to realize that this giant skull in the middle of Zone 7 was Zero Magnaros' skull, and they were like, there's a giant skull in Zone 7? I was like, oh my god. Does nobody pay attention to the environments? Uh oh, uh oh. What, that, what is that? I don't want to be any part of that. I'm going to stay way over here. What the heck? I just turned on sprinkler mode. Oh! <laughs> oh my god! Oh, that was a good one. <laughs>